Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin at Boomi World 2019 in Washington, D.C. with John Furrier this week. John and I are very pleased to welcome back to theCUBE the COO of Boomi, Chris Port. Chris, welcome back. Thank you, thank you for having me. So, yesterday was the Partner Summit. Yep. Today kicks off everything. Let's, let's look at where we were only 11 months ago at Boomi World 18 when we sat down with you in Las Vegas. Sure. You now have 9,000 plus customers in 80 plus countries, 580 I think partners globally. It's amazing the growth, and that's, those are just some of the stats that were shared this sure. morning, the 97% sure. renewal rate, which is yep. huge. Really exciting news coming out this morning for Boomi. You guys have done a great job of listening to your customers and evaluating their data to deliver outstanding cloud native technology. Talk to us about what's transpired since we last saw you that really has you excited. Yeah, well look, growth is exciting. So a lot of growth. Yeah, you know, we just finished an almost 50% growth quarter. Um, so you know, the teams continue to grow. I mean, I think we talked about three pillars last year around product, go to market, and success. So I can tell you our product team, you know, we've got you know, we've got new people from the leadership level. Um, you know, kind of like Steve Wood was here, you know, as the chief product officer. He's still here, but now he's bringing in people, you know, from a leadership perspective, augmenting our incredible leadership team that we've already got, as well as kind of as we think about building out that layer as we kind of build out our development teams uh, and our product management teams. So, a lot of growth there. From a go-to-market, you know, you just talked about 80 countries, 9,000 plus customers, adding six to seven a day, depending upon the day. So, um, and then success. You know, the one thing that we've really done is we've kind of hardened the methodology. We've added a significant number of team members under me as we kind of think about that success equation and really build it out, driving towards the 97, 98% kind of you know, direct side retention on the dollar you know, calculation. You know, and we're now really starting to do some things where we're really starting to look at when we have our success people engaged and, and, and what that drives from a cross sell and expansion, what we really enable our customers to do. You know, and what we've seen is it's about a 30 to 40% uplift. So really kind of like giving us even more ammunition to double down on that. So just I saw some demos on the conversational AI that um, Chris McNabb was demoing yeah. with Mandy, actually with the, the uh, voice attendant there. And they were referencing headcount. Were those actual numbers, have 700 new employees added uh, to Boomi in the uh, last quarter or? Oh, no, not in the what? last quarter, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah, on the demo. But, but in the last two years, three years, I mean, I'll just give you a perspective. I mean, it's grown, 7X since I've been back, and that's three and a half years. Can you talk about headcount numbers at all? Yeah, I mean, we don't really publicly disclose that, but um, but uh, but but we're we're north of a thousand. You know, uh, you know, we we had a goal in terms of you know, Chris used to talk about the road to certain dollar figures, and I can tell yeah, you, yeah. we just blew through our third goal since I've been here in three and a half years yeah. ahead of schedule of all of them. So, get some good so, leverage from Dell Technologies now oh, kicking in. Absolutely. So, so you know, Dell Technologies and 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 you know, kind of what they've done to really start to be a little bit more of an accelerant. We're incredibly excited about what Dell Technologies can do with us in the Fed space. I was just in a federal breakout. Um, and, and Dell has such a great presence in the federal space and such great relationships, and that should absolutely be a force multiplier and accelerator for us there as well. Let's talk about that a little bit more from a federal perspective. Here we are in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Boomi announced maybe six or so weeks ago in August, um, FedRAMP authorization, yeah. and one of the first iPads vendors in the marketplace. But interestingly, what Chris McNabb shared this morning was that Boomi achieved FedRAMP certification in five months, yes. and one of your competitors, I think I know who it is, took 18 months. Yes. So John and I have been talking about time to value with every interview today. Talk to us a little bit about what that FedRAMP marketplace means, not just to your federal businesses, but to Boomi's platform and capabilities in general. Yes, and, and I think Chris started that this morning, right, is, is that when you think about the number of controls that we had to go through to get that certification, and the ability to do it in that five month period 
Um, I think it highlights, you know, A, where we're at, but the investment that we've made, but candidly the architecture, and back to the end customer, why do they care? Because granted, federal is very important to us, but, but candidly we have 9,000 plus customers because we just got started, right? We do have our first Fed customer, but we're not allowed to disclose who it is yet. But, but, but 9,000 plus customers that aren't in Fed, obviously, and why do they care? It's about the increased security. It's effectively the stamp of approval in terms of our scalability and, and just what we've done to invest in their future because it's so paramount and being kind of a trusted advisor, you know, being a software provider is one thing, but trust has just become so much at the forefront. I don't know how many discussions I have on the pre-sales cycle, and, and if it's not in every discussion, it's in nine out of 10 now. Yeah, Chris, in today's business climate, you can't really go a couple of minutes without hearing about, you know, WeWork, you know, pulled their IPO, um, software economics yep. are driving valuations and of real profitable companies like Zoom and others, and then there's the unicorns that aren't making any money, losing money, uh, kind of the Wall, so Wall Street's kind of reacting to that, but the customers look at the business model yeah. of, of companies they partner with. I want you to take a minute to explain Boomi's business model. You guys are a modern software company, yeah. so you yeah. have go-to-markets with engagement journeys and direct sales, partnerships with the ecosystem, but you also got the cloud dynamic going, you got SaaS. Yes. So you got the, I mean SaaS companies are getting great valuations yep. and are highly profitable. So the lever, operating leverage with SaaS combined with how you guys are yep. deploying is very interesting. Can you explain for people that aren't yet Boomi customers sure. what the business model is and how they engage with you and what should they expect? Yeah, well look, I mean, I think it all, tar it all starts from our architecture, right? So, so the, the way the software is architected is it, it just absolutely facilitates and ease of use and a time to value that's unmatched in the space. So bringing to that the 9,000 plus customers. So you're, you're honestly talking about, because when you look at our space, so it all starts there from a strategic construct, you have kind of legacy providers as well as some of the newer names that are you know, what I would call you know, high control. Um, and we may have talked a little bit about this last year, but, but they're in this high control. They, they, they require a fair amount of development. They have long lead times in terms of getting to that time to value. Um, then you have kind of the new school, you know, and Boomi certainly over here, we pioneered it, which is high productivity, high time to value. Again, we want to cut projects from nine months historically that a customer would maybe engage on. We want to make that 90 days. We want to make that nine days, right? So, so everything starts from there and our entire go-to-market has been built off that. So, so what does that mean? When you think about the backs of our partners, you know, we really started out with other ISVs that were in the SaaS space and how could we add to their value prop? Because candidly, integration can be a barrier to a SaaS application, take a concur, a success factor yep. to their adoption. So we remove that barrier, but in the same time, the same speed, the same agility yeah, as they so do. Agility, great value proposition, yep. look that straight in the eye, check, love yeah. that. How do they buy, do they pay, how do they pay you? Yeah. Just talk about the economics so, real quick. Yep, and that's the other thing. So we've moved obviously from this perpetual kind of CapEx model to the SaaS model, which is much more OpEx focused, but again, it's smaller bites. I mean, our customers aren't paying us. I, you know, hey, it'd be great if they did, but they don't have to. And, and we're getting bigger and bigger, but it's typically through expansion versus this massive long sales cycle, pay us five million up front and then pay us a 20% drip for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all, you know, it's basically a fixed fee annually. They pay us for that, that first year and they pay us for the second year. And it's my team's job to make sure they're renewing every year so that, that we continue to be good stewards, good partners with them, and hopefully as they find value, and we find that they do, typical Boomi customer, particularly in the enterprise, doubles their use of Boomi within about an 18 month time frame. And that's the Amazon pioneering model, which is you lower the price for your customer, but your mix of business just gets bigger, so you're that's, losing your, you're dropping the health price for the customer, but you get more customers. Exactly. It's good we economics. Just, yeah, and I mean, it's just, it's about getting in there, proving the value of the technology, and then look, you heard it this morning, you heard just so many compelling stories. Our customers will absolutely continue to find one more use and one more use and one more use and they will just constantly <laughs> double and then double again and double again their use of Boomi, so. Integrations isn't going away. It's kind of like storage and data. Like, yep. you got to store data. Yeah, like, absolutely. So you always be storage, always be integration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I talked to some customers yesterday, Chris, who articulated just that in terms of the unexpected benefits that integrating uh, Boomi with, whether it's a transport management system or Salesforce, and suddenly they're starting to see so many more other downstream benefits that they couldn't even have forecast. 
yes. when they first started saying, well, we've got to integrate these two things and the, you know, the opportunities. But one of the things that came up in some of those customer conversations that I want to talk with you about is from an architectural differentiation standpoint, Boomi says, cloud native, single instance, multi-tenant cloud application delivered as a service. Yes. Talk to us architecturally about how that is. What is that? Yeah. And why is that so unique for sure. Boomi to deliver? Sure, no, that's a great question. So, so single instance means that every single one of our 9,000 plus customers is on the same version of Boomi. So we do 11 releases a year, we don't do it in December because you know, a lot of retail customers, <laughs> we, 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 and a lot of customers go under moratoriums in December. So we don't disrupt business in December, but, but 11 releases a year, um, and, and what that means is every time we do a release, that all 9,000 plus customers on its way to 10,000 and 20,000, they get the same version of Boomi every month. They're all working off that same version. Now, they like that because there's no physical upgrades, um, but, but the reason single instance means so much is again, Chris talked about the 30 terabytes of anonymized data. You can't do that unless you have a single instance software. So that's kind of the secret sauce. Our ability to do things like Boomi suggests that Chris talked about, which candidly was the first real use of AI and middleware, right? Michael Morton's going to talk tomorrow about this insights platform you know, that we're now launching that really will start to get into data privacy to start but, but there's so many different things. I mean, again, yeah. this is literally our fundamental fair advantage. I mean, like nobody else has this. Nobody else has even close to 9,000 plus customers. We, we see everything they do, and it's our opportunity to unlock that and show them the value, not just suggest, not just automated regression testing, not just insights tomorrow, but what are the next three, five, 10 things we can do to absolutely accelerate That's that That's data driven. That is absolutely That's the definition data of data driven. Okay, yes. so I got to get your definition of something I'm hearing a lot of. I kind of got my view of this, but I want to get yours. Yeah. What is, in your Boomi's world, what does event driven mean? Because we hear about event driven architecture. Yeah. What is that? Well, I mean, look, look, think about, think about real time. You know, I mean, historically there's been a lot of, you know, from a process perspective, you know, batch. You know, it's not necessarily done in real time. Event driven is more listening and responding. So, so how do I become much more from a software perspective, how do I become much more real time to listen to those different events that are in my ecosystem? Could be something a customer's doing, could be something that you're doing as a finance employee. So, so it depends on what the use case is, but how do I respond to that event with a subsequent event, but more in a real time kind of you know, a way. So the classic definition of events being something happened, a trigger, software policies, yeah, yeah. to stuff that you can react to. Yeah, yeah. And that's my definition. Yeah, you should talk to Steve Wood, talk to Michael Moore, <laughs> See, and I'm we'll sure that, we'll, they'll be much more eloquent. We'll but, we're but that would be them, my perspective. We're going to pin them down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my final question is culture. Boomi's yeah. got a very cool culture. Yeah. I asked this last year. Um, you guys are still feeling very much like a startup. Yeah. And the culture and the customers got great customer loyalty. Lisa was pointing that out this, on the, our opening. So this has got a good momentum there with the culture. Yeah. Yeah. Your thoughts on how it goes next level? Because as, you, as you're growing, yeah. you got to keep an eye on culture. Yeah. You want to grow as fast as you can, but within the norms of what's workable. Yeah, well look, I mean, I'll say it's the number one priority for the entire company. That starts from Chris all the way down. So, so we have leadership meetings that then cascade down. I have my own leadership meetings. My leaders have their meetings. There's only one topic that is non-negotiable that should be on every agenda. How are we doing? How are our people doing? How are we doing as humans, right? Because look, I look at it, I've been at a lot of companies. I got to be in management consulting, so I got to see a lot of leadership teams that were both good and maybe had opportunities for improvement. I got to see a lot of companies. I've now been part of something, you know, but, but candidly, you know, these three and a half years, I've never been part of something like this, and it's a family. And it's just totally different. It's totally different. You know, I say it all the time in our town halls, but I mean it. Like, it's, so I look at this as a once in a lifetime. These opportunities just don't come around yeah. that often. You know, to go from how many people you know, we had, just even when I got back three and a half years ago, to how many we have today. To think that my team is, my own personal team now, is two and a half times bigger than Boomi was three and a half years ago, to give you a, a scale perspective. Yeah. And so it's just, it's a topic every day is, is how do we invest in people and how do we keep this going? You guys got a lot of challenges too with the growth and I want to yep. get your thoughts on this. One is the new branding looks awesome. We washed some Boomi t-shirts out last night. We were at the, nice. the Washington Nationals game and 
give it a test drive. People are like, what's Boomi? Very strong reaction. But that's Love the question, it. what's Boomi? You got to yeah. answer that question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's one, one uh, comment I want to get from. The other one is the focus on uh, community and education yeah. uh, is some work areas for you guys. So the new brand's going to get awareness. Yep. What's Boomi? You got to answer that, what is Boomi? And then community and education is a focus area. As CEO, how are you going to um, attack those opportunities and sure. challenges yeah. uh, as, a, as a leader? Yeah, well look, I mean on the brand, I think, uh, you know, I think this is a real opportunity for us to really accelerate uh, and amplify our voice in the market. Like, and Mandy's here, I think the things we're doing, I think you're going to see us really start to target the CX level. Like, what is that CEO, that COO, that CIO, what are he or she thinking about and really go after them to make sure that when they start thinking about, you know, integration, flow, hub, whatever it may be, that Boomi absolutely is part of their vernacular. Um, and I think it's today, the, the, the number of times I hear that today that you were saying like, what's Boomi? Is so much less than it was three and a half years ago. So I think we've made some good inroads there, but I really think this is our next level, our opportunity to just to completely, let's get that out of the way. We want to be a household name. We want the B to be iconic. You know, so, and I think we're on our way, right? It's going to be a journey, but, but I think this is a great kind of launching pad. In terms of learning certifications, yeah, that's what we talked about today. We, we, we launched Boomiverse, Boomiverse very yep. excited. You know, 65,000 yeah. members. Absolutely, you know, and, and we need that to be double, triple, quadruple, and you know, um, and, and that's all part of like accelerating this journey. We were literally doing five certifications. This is a global number, but five certifications a day three years ago. We literally just closed a week where we did 50 a day. So 10X, we've opened it up and that's, that's kind of, you know, our big thing is like, it's free. We want the world to come in and learn about Boomi, build that skill set, the hundreds and thousands of jobs when you just start going and looking for Boomi in terms of job sites. It, it's just, the, it's not about a lack of opportunity, it's about our ability to fill those jobs. And we, and I look at that as my responsibility, our team's responsibility, because you know, I want it to be an iconic brand. When you have a resume, you know, I want Boomi to be front and center in terms of the skill sets that you're highlighting because you know, it truly can change people's careers. And you saw some of the stuff we're doing with yeah. veterans. Yeah, and it's fantastic. It really is. And, uh, and it's because of the opportunity that we see and forget 20,000, we need 50,000, 100,000 certifications and we're well on our way. And I think you'll just see us accelerate that and I think Boomi versus Good. that launching pad. Great stuff. Well, you guys all look very well rested for how much innovation is all going right. on at scale. Chris, thank you for joining John and me on theCUBE today. It's been a thank pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. For Chris Port and John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE from Boomi World 19. Thanks for watching.